Hey there, in today's video, I wanna talk a little bit about why I made the transition from an index finger style wrist release to a thumb release. This is the Carter Just Because and some of the advantages and disadvantages it may offer. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. All right, so for most of my bow hunting career, like a lot of y'all, I suspect, I've used the typical uh, index finger style release with a wrist strap. Uh, whether that's with Velcro or in this case with a buckle and I've shot a variety of different ones whether it be the Cobra that I started out with uh, the Scott Little Goose Mongoose several different ones I've shot but for the most part they've done a great job the problem that I run into is in an attempt to film hunts which I've done for most of my bow hunting career as well um, it creates a situation where um, you know when, when I'm in a tree or in a ground blind and I'm preparing for the shot and I've got the camera ready, a lot of times what will happen is the animal will move, obviously. The animal will reposition itself, the animal will move, and that will require that I make adjustments to the camera, whether it's panning with the animal's movement, with the DSLR or mirrorless type, making focus adjustments, having to adjust the aperture setting or the shutter speed, or any number of things. And what can happen is, um, as I'm making those adjustments, what frequently happens is, if I'm not careful, um, I bang that re release strap against the tripod or especially with a camera arm that's coming out from the tree. And so um, you are prone to possibly speak in the deer if, you know, when you're making those adjustments, and I'm obviously exaggerating it a little bit here, but it can certainly happen and it's happened to me more than my fair share of times. So the other issue is um, the animal may move several times. So what I've find myself doing is I'll attach my release to the string and I'm preparing for the shot and getting ready to draw the animal moves so I'll, I have to unclip the release make the adjustment to the camera even if I don't make the noise make the adjustment to follow the animal reposition the camera and then it requires me to go back and uh, reclip the release to the D loop which typically isn't a problem in a controlled environment like this but in a dark situation like I'm in a ground blind or something and it's a darkened ground blind or especially when the adrenaline's pumping and my heart's racing uh, trying to get that attached sometimes can be a little bit of a chore in itself so having to uh, unclip that and it may happen several times during the course of one hunt just to get the shot in fact on the the whitetail that I shot from uh, the ranch the killing tree that I posted up back in I think it was January um, I actually included some clips where I illustrated that, uh, some of the difficulty that I was having when I was having to unclip, reclip, and so forth. So for the last couple of years, um, I've actually been considering making a switch to uh, a thumb style release, um, just mainly for that purpose, but I never have pulled the proverbial trigger on it. I'm gonna give a little bit of credit to Bradley over at 4B Bowhunting and Outdoors. I was watching one of his clips. He puts up some fantastic videos. If you haven't checked out his channel, be sure to do that. I'll leave a, a link to the, in the description to his channel. But I saw that he was in a ground blind and he clipped his release to a string. He had a thumb release similar to this one right here. Clipped it to the D-loop and then placed the bow in the bow holder and it was ready in position. And that's when I made the decision that yes, I'm gonna make the switch over to a thumb style release and uh, just for that purpose. And so that's really the main reason that I did. I actually reached out to Bradley, sent him a message. He told me which one that he had. Um, and so I started the evaluation process and kind of looking at different releases. I posted up on texasbowhunter.com and asked for opinions. And of course, as you might expect, there are a wide variety of opinions. A lot of different manufacturers, a lot of great releases, a lot of different, I was actually surprised at the number of, of styles. There's three point finger, four finger, two finger. Um, you've got the true hinge release. You've got the back tension releases. You've got a true thumb. You've got a push pull type thumb release. So there's an incredible number of options. And of course the feedback that I got from most people was go to the archery shop and, uh, and test out a couple of different ones. So I found myself in the DFW Metroplex back in January. And so I called my buddy Jeff over at uh, Cinnamon Creek Ranch and told him that I wanted to come by and take a look at several different releases. Cinnamon Creek Ranch has been a, an amazing sponsor and supporter of TexasBowHunter.com for many years. Joe and Joey and Jeff and, and Chris and all those guys over there have been extremely supportive of TexasBowHunter.com. They've got a great shop. I used to frequent it a lot. A lot of our site members up in the Metroplex uh, shoot there, spend a lot of time there. They posted events for us. They posted happy hours and all kind of different things. So if you find yourself in the Metroplex, I want to encourage you to go by and talk to those guys 
friendly, great group of people. Um, so I went by there and sure enough, they had a great selection of thumb releases. They had Carters and Stans and, and uh, Trueball and uh, Scott, just a whole different variety. And that's exactly what I was looking for, something that I could try. Now, Chris uh, spent a lot of time, I, I talked to Chris there and Jeff spent a lot of time with me. We went through different ones. We pulled them out of the package. Uh, we. You know, I was able to get a feel for the weight of them. Chris kind of walked me through some of the things that I might consider. Obviously of primary importance was finding something that I could just clip on the string and leave it attached and that I wouldn't, you know, th that I didn't have to carry on me, um, that I could just attach to the, to the D loop, have it at the ready when I was ready to draw, go ahead and, and grab hold of it, pull it back, let her rip. He also talked to me a little bit about uh, some of the form issues some of the some of the uh the differences in shooting a thumb style release using the back tension getting more of a replication for back tension than you might with uh an index style so uh, it was really educational and informative for me to do that um, after shooting several different ones including chris's personal release that he went out and got for me uh, i made the decision to go with the uh the Carter just because it's a uh, it's a great little release and this isn't really a release review it's more of a like I say a discussion on why I made the switch and then some considerations that you might want to think about as well some of the advantages uh, that come along with uh, shooting a, a wrist release and then I'll talk about a couple of disadvantages as well so I've had this thing now for about five months and I've been really happy with it I've been on a couple of different hunts it did take some getting used to so what I found so far in the over the five months is in the couple of hunts that I've been able to do is it's performed exactly like I wanted it to uh, I did the Lavaca County hog hunt uh, out back here I'll post a link to that if you haven't watched it and shot a hog worked out just, just the way I, I wanted it to. Had it ready to go, hog came in, I was able to position the camera, make the movements. When I was ready to shoot, just grabbed hold of, hold of the release, uh, brought it back, anchored, fired. So similarly on the turkey hunt that I did with Jeff Osborne a couple of months ago, um, it worked out really well as well. So uh, again, I had the bow ready to go, the turkeys came in, we made adjustments to the camera as we needed to. When I was ready, I could just grab hold of the release uh, pull it back and take the shot. So when it comes down to it, the only reason that I made the switch from the index style release to the thumb release is so that I could more easily and quietly operate camera equipment. But it did come with some additional advantages and I'll talk a little bit about those. So another advantage that I found, for me anyway personally, is I think it's improved my form in a couple of different ways. Uh, number one is um, it's, it more closely resembles a back tension release. So I think I'm less prone to punching the trigger uh, like you would on a trigger finger release. I think you kind of get, I, I know I fall into uh, the habit, especially if I'm not practicing often enough. When my pen sight comes across the target, I just want to punch the trigger and, uh, and fire the shot. Whereas with a little bit of practice, I think you move more closely with the thumb release, you kind of have to change your position, but I think you get more of that true back tension pull through the shot um, just because of the way the release works. So as you're coming back, as you're pulling through the, the shot and you're squeezing your shoulder blades together, it causes a natural rotation in your hand. And when you got the thumb trigger buried in here, um, you got your anchor point, you're squeezing those shoulders together, it causes the pressure on your thumb to tr trigger the release. And so I think you get truly more of that surprise release uh, that everybody talks about. And so um, I think for that reason, it helps improve your form. Um, it's been a little bit of a learning curve with me, um, and but the more I shoot it, the more comfortable I get, the more second nature it becomes for me as well. Now for a couple of disadvantages, um, or at least short-term disadvantages is what I'll call them, is it did change my anchor. So with the wrist release, it, it actually shortens it up. So if you consider you know, where you're attaching it to the D loop, the diff distance is actually gonna be increased. So it could cause a situation where you need to change even the module on your cams. Fortunately, I didn't. I just had to adjust my anchor point. Um, so I had a little bit of, of play in there so I could adjust just my anchor where I'm anchoring. So I did have to adjust the form. With that, I also had to adjust the location of my peep sight. And then of course, as I adjusted my peep sight, it required uh, adjustment of the pins as well. So I did have to make a few modifications to the bow. Fortunately, they were pretty easy modifications, just a matter of sliding that peep and then making adjustments to the pin. 
So as I mentioned, I did have to change my anchor point, had to adjust my form a little bit, but again, that's kind of more of a short-term inconvenience. Over the long term, I think it's gonna help improve my form and improve uh, my shooting. All right, so probably the biggest potential disadvantage, and especially for somebody like me, is, well, it's great to be able to attach it to the string and not have it tethered to my wrist or anything else. The problem is, is it's not tethered to anything other than if I'm carrying it, and I have it attached to the D loop, um, I'm really worried about losing it. If anybody that knows me knows that I have a tendency to misplace things, and I can certainly envision a situation where walking through the brush, have it attached onto uh, the D loop, uh, hit a, a twig, a snag, or something like that, and cause that thing to, to trigger the release, off it falls and there I am without a release. Now I'm working on some potential solutions for that. I may come up with a tether um, that I can attach it to while I'm in transit, you know, just th either through paracord or something like that. Um, obviously I don't want to attach it while I'm hunting to my wrist um, because it kind of defeats that purpose of having it ready to go and ready for the draw. Um, but I do need to come up with a solution for that. Semi related to that is the cost. Thumb releases are gonna range anywhere from, I don't know, you probably you can certainly get them for under $100 and they go as high as $200 to $250. Um, I ended up going with uh, the Carter just because it retails, I think for somewhere, I think I wanna say 210 to 230, something like that, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, it's a very well-built, well-designed, well-machined, it is a quality piece uh, of gear. And so I think I'll get a lot of long-term use out of it provided I don't use it, but it is pretty pricey. And then when you start talking about, for example, with my elk hunt, I certainly want to run a backup release. And so I have to make the decision, do I want to spend not only $200 on the first release, but do I want to spend an additional $200 for a backup? Now I can certainly carry one of my old Scott wrist releases with me for a backup, but again, that's going to require an adjustment to my form. It's going to require an adjustment to my, my peep sight, my pins. I'm going to have to make several adjustments. So again, for a backcountry hunt like that, I'll probably go ahead and bite the bullet and at least pick up a, a relatively inexpensive backup that I can carry uh, with me up in the mountains. I'm curious how many of y'all may have made a sw similar switch from uh, the wrist style release to a thumb release and why did you make the change? What are some of the advantages and maybe some disadvantages that you see in making that change? Leave those comments in the uh, comment section below. Once again, I appreciate you joining me. Be sure to check us out over on texasbowhunter.com. We have a great interactive community, a lot of knowledgeable bow hunters. Um, so be sure to join us over there. Be sure to also to check us out on our Instagram page at texasbowhunter.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell notification button. As always, I appreciate you joining me and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.